A neglected conflict strains ties between Algeria and Spain. Trade and diplomatic links have been cut because of a dispute about the Western Sahara region. But what's behind this recent escalation and can it be resolved? This is Inside Story. Hello there and welcome to the programme. I'm Nick Clark. A contested region in northwestern Africa is straining ties between Algeria and Spain. The Algerian government has suspended a friendship agreement and halted all trade except for natural gas for now. The dispute centres around the status of Western Sahara. The region was a Spanish colony until 1975. Morocco then took control in a move that's not been recognised internationally. Algeria supports fighters who've been calling for independence in Western Sahara. In March, Spain's Prime Minister angered Algeria when he endorsed Morocco's plan to give some autonomy to the region. The dispute highlights a difficult balancing act for Spain. Madrid wants more energy supplies from Algeria, while at the same time putting pressure on Morocco to stop the flow of migrants into Spanish territories in North Africa. At the moment, we're looking into the scope and practical consequences of this measure, both at the national and the European level, so as to give a correct response in a calm and constructive, yet firm way to defend Spain's interests and those of its businesses. Well, Western Sahara has been the subject of a long-running territorial dispute between Morocco and the indigenous Sahrawi people led by the Polisario Front. The movement says the region is its homeland and has pushed for independence for decades. But Morocco says it belongs to it. The dispute led to a 16-year conflict before the two sides agreed to a UN-backed ceasefire in 1991. Today, more than two-thirds of the region is controlled by Morocco. And last month, the Netherlands joined the United States and other countries supporting Morocco's plan to grant some autonomy. Algeria is the main supporter of the Polisario Front, and many refugees from the region live there. All right, let's bring in our guest now. In New York, we have Ambassador Sidi Omar. He's the Polisario Front representative at the United Nations. In Casablanca, Yasmin Hasnawi, a North Africa Affairs Specialist. And in Lisbon, we have Ricardo Fabiani, a Project Director for North Africa at the International Crisis Group. A warm welcome to each one of you. Thanks for joining us here today. Uh, Ricardo Fabiani from the International Crisis Group, if I could start with you. How serious do you think this development is, Algeria suspending trade and, and breaking off this uh, friendship agreement? I think it's uh, pretty serious, particularly considering that uh, this is only one episode in a long series of, uh, uh, let's say, retaliatory measures that Algeria has been taking against, against Spain uh, over the past weeks. I think uh, it shows very clearly that the Algerian leadership is uh, very much bent on the idea that they want to put maximum pressure, as much pressure as possible, really, on Spain uh, to push Madrid to change position on this issue, or otherwise they are ready to uh, make Spain pay a heavy price uh, for its diplomatic shift. And obviously this is, I would say, uh, obviously dangerous and, and, and uh, a worrying for Spain, uh, particularly from a bilateral diplomatic perspective, considering the energy ties and the, migrator, the migration issues that tie the two countries. But it's also obviously worrying for Europe and the other European governments that can now see that taking a specific stance uh, on this issue, on this conflict, uh, without considering the point of view of other parties involved uh, in this dispute, right. can actually uh, bring a very heavy price. You mentioned energy there. At the moment, Algeria's supply of gas to Spain uh, is still flowing. Might that come into question? To what degree could Algeria, you know, weaponize its gas supply, if you will? I don't think Algeria is really ready to weaponize uh, its gas supplies to Spain, simply because they know very well, the Algerian leadership knows very well that right now, given the situation in the Ukraine and uh, with Russia, weaponizing gas would be seen as uh, an unacceptable move by the European governments who are just looking for reliable suppliers uh, at this stage. But there are other things that Algeria can do 
to try and put pressure on Spain using gas. And one could be, for example, the renegotiations of gas prices uh, with Spain. So that would not be a full out, a full blown, let's say, um, weaponization of gas, but it would be a way of using gas to put pressure to, on Spain and to signal very clearly that Algeria is displeased with the position Madrid has taken on this issue. All right, Yasmin Asnawi, how do you think this will happen, uh, this will affect what happens in the region now, Algeria breaking ties off in this way with Spain? Well, first of all, it's important to recall the viewer, uh, you know, just a little bit very briefly about the, the genesis of these uh, of these tensions. Uh, it's it's basically it's it's the, 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 this tension is solely between Morocco and Algeria since the reintegration of Morocco in its southern provinces in 1975. You know, Algeria uh, claimed the move through its second president, Tawari Boumediene, and decided to, you know, to counter Morocco in its legitimate and historical claim to the West. Western Sahara. It is important also to highlight that uh, Algeria's decision to severe ties with either Morocco, Spain, or any other country that is now aligned with Morocco, as your previous speaker stated, in its historical legitimacy regarding Mar the Moroccan Western Sahara, comes as a response to uh, the diplomatic successes uh, achieved by Morocco in the recent year. Now, I think that Algeria will continue whenever it sees a country that is aligned with Morocco or that is aligned specifically with the UN uh, a resolution that calls for a political solutions uh, under the plan of autonomy. Uh, I think that uh, Algeria will keep on severe ties with whichever country that decided to 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 align uh, uh, to, to to be aligned with Morocco. And this uh, it it doesn't serve the country, it doesn't serve the world, especially now with the right. with the conflict what is happening with with Russia and Ukraine. So I think that. Uh, uh, um, I mean, I, I think that, uh, um, um, and more recently, we have seen countries like also Germany that is aligned with Morocco. Yeah, all right. We're, uh, we're going to come on to all of that in a second, Yasmin. We're going to come on to that as, as the program goes on. Yeah, but, but you talked about Morocco's legitimate claim to the Western Sahara, to Western Sahara. I mean, that in itself is in dispute, isn't it? It, it? It's a mess, isn't it? And ultimately, it demonstrates the need for Morocco to step forward and sort this out with Algeria. Well, absolutely. I mean, the two, uh, the two, uh, the two opposing countries. It's a regional conflict. It's not even a conflict between entity. It's a conflict between Morocco and Algeria. And I think that all the uh, thirty-four resolutions uh, call for a political solutions, call for Algeria, Morocco, uh, uh, the Polisario, and Mauritania, and specifically Algeria, to step up to the plate and participate in the uh, Geneva roundtables that that was started by uh, Hearst Scholar and now uh, Stefan. De Mastura is calling for this uh, for for these talks. Algeria refused to take part in these talks, and what is surprising is that it's 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 really impeding that political process by severe ties with any country that that is aligned or that sees that the real uh, solution is a political solution that is aligned okay. by whatever Morocco proposed the plan of autonomy. So I think that. I think the two countries, it is regional conflict. I think that Algeria needs to step up and sit with Morocco and solve this 47-year right. uh, okay. uh, You've made uh, that point. You've made that point. Let's, let's bring Ambassador Sidi Omar. So uh, impeding progress. So Algeria is impeding progress. What do you think of this, this uh, further shift from Spain towards the Moroccan position? And let me start by uh, setting the record straight. The question of Western Sahara is a decolonization issue. It's an international conflict between the Frente Polisario and the Kingdom of Morocco, as recognized by the United Nations relevant resolutions. Uh, so apparently one of your guests seem to be uh, out of date in terms of the real political and legal nature of the issue of Western Sahara. But what's actually at the heart of this issue that we're talking about and the growing tension in our region is to be explained by one main fact. There is a regime that has been pursuing an expansionist policy since its existence. Okay, look, look, look Sidi, well, we're as, going to come on to that in a second, but a, can I just, uh, just please answer the questions. What do you think of the shift from Spain towards the Moroccan position? Because that, that ultimately is what, what affects what's going to happen regionally. And we'll, we'll come on to the exactly. other, your other points, but uh, please answer that question first. What, what cannot, do you make of this move? We cannot, yes, we cannot understand what is happening now in the region and the relations that you're talking about without putting it even briefly into its historical context. I know, what, make it quick please Morocco and move on. That, exactly, we're talking about Morocco that 
uh, tried to invade Algeria in October 1960. Morocco that is occupying parts of the Sahara Republic. Morocco that claimed Mauritania for many years and it took it uh, nine years to recognize. Morocco, which tried to occupy a Spanish Iceland in July 2002. This is a regime that has been pursuing expansionism as a tool. Ricardo, if I can come to you, Ricardo Fabiani from the International Crisis Group. Uh, so what's your view about this as far as this is concerned? Because it, this shift from Spain is, is, is quite a distinct move, isn't it? And it was always likely to produce a, a response from Algeria, wasn't it? So, I mean, we're talking about the country that colonized uh, the Western Sahara for several decades, and most importantly, that from a legal perspective is still considered as the colonial uh, power uh, of this territory uh, since it, it left it in 75. So in theory, this is a country that has a special responsibility, both historical, political, and diplomatic, towards Western Sahara and towards a final settlement of this conflict. And the fact that this country has now moved from a relatively neutral stance to this position of recognizing uh, the Moroccan solution, the Moroccan proposal as the best solution for the conflict is extremely meaningful, also considering the significant Sahrawi diaspora that is present in this country. And it's, it's a signal, right? This is, this is the most important thing. This is a signal that Spain, along with other European countries such as Germany, the Netherlands, etc., are sending, that they have stopped believing in a solution to this conflict that is not the Moroccan preferred option. Of course, this is happening without really coordination among European governments, without really waiting for the UN envoy to actually come up with his own proposal, with his own plan. And I think this is obviously problematic because it means that it's unclear really what the European position here, here is, if there is a unified position, of if there are actually several European positions and they are not that are not negotiated or planned in a, in advance or coordinated with the UN, which remains the main framework within which this conflict is supposed to be uh, settled. Uh, Sidi Omar from the Polisario Front. Uh, the fact is that international support is is moving firmly in the direction of the Moroccan position. There's a growing number of uh, nations voicing their support for the autonomy proposal. The fact remains that the issue of Western Sahara is a decolonization issue on the agenda of the United Nations. But what do you think about is that fact? That, what, what do you think the fact that the, the international view is, is moving away from your point of view? This is not true. We're speaking about the position of a few countries. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking a few miles from the United Nations headquarters, where the issue is still on the agenda of the uh, full committee as a decolonization issue. It is treated by the Security Council, where France, that you've mentioned, and even the United States of America are sitting, and the position is one of calling for a solution that provides for the thought determination of the people of Western Sahara, because simply we cannot imagine a United Nations advocating and giving its blessing to enact the illegal occupation. This is what is uh, uh, taking place at the United Nations. As for the position of these few countries, we have heard them, but we have to dig deeper to know what made Spain change its position. It's blackmail, pressure by this expansionist regime that I said even tried to occupy some part of Spain. So the fact remains, Western Sahara is a decolonization issue, and that will not be changed by a position by Spain or any other country, uh, because we live in a rules-based international order that goes against illegal occupation of territories by force and enshrines the right of peoples to self-determination. And this is uh, what is the case. And this is what the Sahrawi people have been fighting for. And they will continue to fight for their rights, no matter how this or that country expresses preferences for an illegal uh, proposal that has no basis whatsoever. Do you think this could now escalate into conflict, Sidi Omar? Absolutely. The position taken by Spain and other governments will only add to the instability of the entire region, because we are, they are encouraging an expansionist regime to go on with its attempt to force and impose reality on the ground. We are in a world, as I said, based, a rules-based world that goes against occupation. And that's why 
the legal occupation by Morocco has never been uh, recognized by the United Nations. The United Nations has never recognized the illegal occupation of parts of the Sahara Republic, which is a full and founding member of the African Union. So indeed, unfortunately, these countries are just giving more ammunition to the occupying state of Morocco to not engage seriously in the peace process, which the personal envoy, Mr. Stephen de Mistura, is trying to revive after Morocco breached the ceasefire in November uh, 2020. Okay, uh, Yasmin, Morocco's claim to the Western Sahara, Sahara is not recognized by the United Nations. Well, uh, the Western Sahara conflict is, first of all, only and solely under the Security Council. Now we have seen uh, those countries like the United States, France, uh, Spain, which is the former colonizer, and uh, that actually recognized uh, uh, the, the plan of autonomy, which, uh, which is under the Moroccan sovereignty, which, is, which claims that Morocco uh, to have the Western Sahara under its, its sovereignty. So for me, I think that the problem is solved within, it will be solved and solved within uh, within the secure within the security council and no other body, not even the African Union, is responsible of this uh, to solve this issue. Only the Security Council. We have seen more than 34 resolutions that call for a political solution. The referendum is a bygone uh, uh, referendum, which which we don't use for uh, for 18 years. It's a dead. It's but why? A, it's why a, it's a, it's a, I was going to ask you about that, Yasmin. Yes. Why is the referendum dead? What, how, what happened to it? It was proposed way back in the early because 90s, it's wasn't not, it? What, it's, why did it? It's just... not a credible. Because it's not credible, and because of the legitimacy uh, legitimacy of the uh, uh, Moroccan uh, uh, the Moroccan history over the Western Sahara, that actually the countries decided to endorse Morocco. I think that the countries don't uh, are not waiting for the Moroccan uh, for Morocco to, to to dictate them. And like uh, you know what uh, what what he said, I think it's not it's not a blackmail. Uh, Spain uh, the the Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez has clearly stated that the current position of Spain as a former colonizer to the Moroccan uh, Western Sahara should have been done or should have the, 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 this colonizer should have been solved uh, done 47 years ago. And you will see other countries uh, in the European Union that follow suit uh, Spain in this, uh, uh, in this claim. I think that the problem now is within Algeria. It's Algeria that's actually impeding the, uh, the peace process. It's Algeria that needs to recognize the, the history historical implication to the impediment of, uh, to this artificial conflict, Algeria needs to step to the plate and participate okay. genuinely in the round table right. of Geneva. You've said Finally, that. We've already established finish. that. We've the already Algerian established you. Well, okay, just, you've got 30 that, seconds that, more. That, that's, this era is not an era of, 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 of the Cold War. So I think that the, 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 the Algerian citizens need, need more the Algerian regime to solve the internal economic uh, uh, crisis of Algeria instead of mingling into right. uh, war with, uh, with Morocco that won't lead uh, anywhere. Ricardo Fabiani, we can see, I mean, we can see the difficulties here, can't we? Morocco regards this area as the southern provinces of Morocco. Algeria regards it as under occupation since 1975. The UN says it doesn't belong to anybody. What about the people who actually live there, Ricardo? Is, is it clear what they want? Um, I don't think we can say with certainty, uh, given that a referendum or any sort of uh, popular uh, survey uh, has never been conducted, we, we cannot really say with certainty what the uh, population wants, right? Also, because we're talking about a very complicated picture here. There are Sahrawis who are based in the refugee camps in Tindouf, Algeria. There are Sahrawis who live uh, uh, in a Morocco-controlled Western Sahara, and there are obviously there's also a growing population of, uh, let's say, Moroccans who have moved to Western Sahara. So, really identifying with certainty, with clarity, who wants what has become, I would say, a very complicated matter, which is, you know, why, of course, we co we keep talking and we keep going back to the issue of the UN framework and the fact that mm -hmm. there needs to be some sort of compromise, uh, a solution, and most importantly, support for the UN framework uh, at this moment, given that unilateral moves, unilateral measures by individual international actor will not help settle this issue uh, for good. Sidi, uh, if I can come to you, how does what is going on affect the lives of the people living in the region, the communities and so forth? Give us a Paint a picture for us of what's going on on that front. Indeed, uh, what uh, our people are living under in the occupied territories of the uh, Sahara Republic is, is, is appalling. 
And that's happening uh, without the scrutiny of the international community because Morocco uh, prohibits anybody to go to the territory. Even the United Nations specialized bodies are not allowed to go to the occupied territories of the Sahara Republic, where our people are facing all sorts of crimes against humanity, torture, disappearances, and all that you can imagine, unspeakable cruelty being uh, uh, practiced against them. And for the simple reason for demanding their inalienable right to self-determination and independence to be respected as in any part of the world. We're speaking about a regime that's, as I said, built on expansionism, a regime that has been uh, oppressing its own people who are rising, but nobody knows about that. Uh, we are speaking about a regime that recalls these dictatorial regimes of the Middle Ages, and it's really hard. Uh, sometimes difficult to understand that still in the world of the 21st century world, people do not know the real nature of the regime ruling in Morocco, which is one of the most and less qualified regimes in the world to speak about human rights. And that's really is part of this tragedy, where a peaceful, small people are fighting for principle and fundamental rights. Yes, mean, at the same time... Wait. People yes, are speaking about... Yes, we see the Irma there is talking about a, 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 a peaceful yeah. people fighting for their rights. Well, I mean, it's their own rights, whatever they believe in. But I believe that uh, it's important to, uh, to, to, uh, to remind the viewer about the reality of the West Moroccan, Western Sahara, the southern region. There are 80% of the Sahrawi population who live in the Moroccan, Western Sahara and who participate fully and freely in the public policies of this, of this region, uh, as well as at the national and, and, and local elections. Now, at the level of, of Tindouf, the Tindouf camps, one has to know that's the only only camp in the world that were not sensed, and because of Algeria has not allowed the UNHCR to sense this uh, the, this population. How can we know the number of this population? They live in dire positions, uh, 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 dire conditions, and they are vulnerable to the recruitment of, of of terrorists that come from the Sahel. So I think because of the not I think I'm I mean this conflict because of this artificial conflict. This area is vulnerable. This area is prone to uh, terrorist recruitment in, in uh, specifically in, in, in the Tindouf region. And there is a growing threat to the security of the Sahel region and the Mediterranean uh, bases. Again, I'm gonna go back. The, the, yes, the conflict I mean, I'm gonna jump in there. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, before you go back, I, I just have to jump in there. We're coming towards the end of the program and I want to give one final question to Ricardo Fabiani. Uh, Let's come back full circle to Spain's position, which isn't cut and dried, because there's a lot of opposition to it in the political hierarchy in Spain, isn't there? Yes, absolutely. I mean, this is a country that, uh, as I mentioned before, has longstanding ties with both Morocco and with the Sahrawi uh, population and with the Sahrawi diaspora that is present on its own national territory. So it's only natural that uh, this position taken by the government uh, has been and is still, I would say, uh, contested by significant sections of the population. We know, for example, that the junior partner of the ruling coalition, Podemos, has already denounced this shift, saying that it doesn't really represent the opinion of the majority of the Spanish population. Surveys point exactly to that, the fact that the majority of Spaniards don't seem to back the decision of this government. And there have been, there's been criticism even coming from the right, uh, particularly regarding what Spain has or has not really obtained in return for this, uh, for this move. So I would say that even within Spain, the debate is still very lively and there are still significant questions regarding, uh, the, the, let's say, the logic of this move and the benefits uh, of this shift. Well, trying to tackle a, a 50 year dispute in 20 minutes or so is a real challenge, but uh, we do thank you all for joining us here today to try and take it on. Uh, Sidi Omar, Yasmin Hasnawi, and Ricardo Fabiani. Thanks a lot. And thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, just go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Nick Clark, and the entire team here in Doha, it's goodbye for now.